Welcome to the JSON and YAML data structures module. By the end of this module, you should be able to explain JavaScript object notation or JSON and YAML ain't markup language or YAML data structures. When talking to another human being, you are generally not concerned about how data is represented. This is fine because humans understand natural language. The process is not as simple when sending instructions to a machine or an application. Maybe in the future, machines and applications may learn how to process instructions using human language, but we are not there yet. Data needs to be structured and formatted using standardized methods before it can be forwarded to an automation system or a network device. There are multiple data interchange formats, including XML, JSON, and YAML. XML is very powerful, but has a reputation of being rather complex and not very human-readable. JSON and YAML have emerged as simpler alternatives to XML. In general, the automation system or API that you are using determines which data format to use. No matter the programming language, programmers and network operators generally deal with data types such as Strings, which represent a sequence of Unicode characters. Numbers, which represent a signed decimal number. Boolean, which represent either a true or false value. Null, which represents an empty value denoted by a keyword like null or similar. Complex or compound data types bundle multiple values of basic types together. Recursive or nested constructs, where one complex data type includes another complex data type, are also common. The most widely used complex data types are the list and the dictionary. A list is an ordered sequence of values, each of which can be of any data type. The number of elements or the length of the list can be zero or an empty list, one, two, or more. The example shows a three element list. The order of the values in the list is always preserved. The terminology used to refer to a list can be different depending on what programming or data representation language you are using. The term list is used by Python and Java developers. A dictionary is an unordered collection of key value pairs. The storage of dictionaries is optimized for fast, key based data retrieval. Algorithms like hash tables and binary search trees are used for these purposes. Based on the specifics of how these algorithms work, the order of keys in a dictionary is not maintained. Hence, dictionaries are considered to be unordered. For example, when performing a for loop over a dictionary's keys, you should not expect to retrieve the keys in the same order that you added them to the dictionary. The term dictionary in Python corresponds to a hash in Ruby an object in JSON, a mapping in YAML, or sometimes an associative array. The example shows a JSON dictionary object with three key value pairs. In this case, the keys and values are string data types. JSON is a lightweight data interchange format. JSON is human readable, but it is easier for machines to parse than humans. JSON is language independent, but uses conventions that are familiar to programmers of languages like C, C++, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, Perl, and Python. JSON first appeared as a lightweight alternative to XML and quickly became popular. YAML is a Unicode-based data serialization language designed around common native data types found in agile programming languages. YAML is very human-readable and is useful for a variety of tasks, including configuration files, internet messaging, object persistence, and data auditing. YAML was designed as a superset of JSON, offering improved human readability and a more complete information model. YAML uses indentation, which means the white space in the beginning of line, to show structure. Every JSON file is also a valid YAML file. However, the opposite is not true. JSON and YAML are similar enough that in most cases, you can convert between the two languages. Both JSON and YAML are human readable. However, the foremost design goal of JSON is universality. So while the language is simple to generate and parse, there is sacrifice of some human readability. 
JSON uses the lowest common denominator information model, ensuring that JSON data can be processed easily by any modern programming environment. In contrast, the highest priority of YAML is human readability and support for serializing arbitrary native data structures. YAML is simpler to read, but the language is more complex for machines to generate and parse. YAML requires more complex processing when crossing between different programming environments. JSON is widely used on the internet as a method to move data between web servers and asynchronous JavaScript and XML, or AJAX clients on web browsers. For example, small news feeds on web pages that update without refreshing the page often use JSON as the method to serialize the data. Within Junos, JSON can be used as an alternative to XML in many cases. You can retrieve operational and configuration data in JSON using the Junos CLI or Network Configuration Protocol or NetConf session. You can upload device configuration in JSON format as well. JSON is also used by the Junos Representational State Transfer or REST API. YAML is used in Junos Automation to define Junos PyEasy tables and views, which are used to map portions of a remote procedure call or RPC response into a Python data structure. YAML is also used in Ansible to create playbooks that automate Juniper devices. JSON is a data serialization language most often used to move data between an internet client and server. JSON is not a programming language, so it does not perform loops or have conditional statements. In many instances, it has taken the place of XML as a method of structuring data. In many ways, JSON is similar to C or Java type languages. JSON uses curly brackets and square brackets to structure blocks of data and white space is generally ignored. JSON is case sensitive. JSON does not have a defined way to add comments into a document. Everything is treated as data. JSON is considered a simple data serialization language because there are only two data structures, objects and arrays. JSON has a limited number of value types that are organized within objects and arrays. The example illustrates different JSON values, including strings, numbers, true, false, null, objects, and arrays. JSON values can be nested inside objects and arrays. JSON strings can consist of any Unicode characters, except for double quotes and backslashes. You can use double quotes and backslashes if you remember to use the backslash escape sequence first as you would in C or Java programming. The example demonstrates escaping double quotes and backslashes. JSON numbers can be either integers or floating point numbers with decimal points. You can express exponential numbers using either uppercase E or lowercase E. Numbers enclosed in double quotes are treated as strings. JSON objects begin with and end with curly brackets. A single object can contain a series of key-value pairs, separated by a colon. An empty object or zero-key value pairs is also allowed. Keys in JSON are always a string data type. The example shows an object with two key-value pairs. A JSON array is an ordered collection of values. Array structures begin and end with square brackets and contain zero, one, or more values separated by commas. Remember that JSON arrays use square brackets with commas separating individual values. Objects are constrained by curly brackets with commas to separate different key value pairs. It is very common to have objects and arrays nested inside other objects and arrays. The example shows a hierarchical JSON document. It also includes an empty array and a null value. The Juno CLI can display configuration in JSON format. The example demonstrates using a show protocols BGP pipe display JSON command. You can get the same output in operational mode by issuing the show configuration pipe display JSON command. Loading configuration in JSON format is also supported. You can also use the pipe display JSON command option 
to display Juno's operational command output in JSON. The example displays JSON output for the Juno's operational mode, Show Chassis Alarms command. YAML is commonly used to store configuration data for use in automation platforms such as Ansible and OpenStack. Like JSON, YAML is popular because it is considered easier to read and create than XML. YAML is case-sensitive and does not ignore white space. YAML uses white space for structure, similar to Python, and requires indents to be made with spaces, not tabs. Although not required, it is customary to start all YAML documents with three dashes. Contrary to JSON, strings in YAML do not require surrounding quotes, and comments are supported using the pound sign or hashtag. Like JSON, YAML has two basic structures, mappings and sequences. YAML mappings are sets of key-value pairs that are equivalent to JSON objects. In the example, the keys and corresponding values are separated by a colon. The colon must be followed by a space. YAML strings do not require quotation marks. YAML sequences are similar to JSON arrays and are used to store a series of items. Each item begins with a dash or hyphen character. The example shows a YAML sequence containing three string elements. Quotes are optional. YAML mappings and sequences can be nested in other mappings and sequences to provide structure. Note how white space is used to indicate hierarchy or nesting. Welcome to the Junos Automation and YAML module. By the end of this module, you should be able to explain how JavaScript object notation, or JSON, and YAML ain't markup language, or YAML, are used to automate Junos devices. The example demonstrates using Junos, PyEasy, Jinja2 templates, and device-specific YAML variable files to automate the deployment of Junos configuration, containing unique values. The example shows a sample Ansible playbook formatted in YAML. It begins with a sequence and contains both nested mappings and sequences. The document is easier to read when compared to XML or JSON.